We're going to look at how reviewing other authors' books can help us promote our own books, both on Amazon and other sales sites. We all know the power of Amazon. It's where most of the people in the United States go to buy books, as well as in a lot of other countries. It's very big. It gained over a million new Prime members in December 2013, just gone. And they do have most of the market share for ebooks both in the US and elsewhere. The UK is particularly big for ebook sales. It has over 70% of the market share there. So Amazon is really, really powerful. And it's one of the first sites to think about if you're going to start doing reviews in order to promote your own books. And don't forget other book sites, not just the sales sites like Nook and Kobo and, and all of those, but the book cataloging sites. So Goodreads, Shafari, Library Thing, all of these, you can add books to your own virtual shelves and you can rate and review other people's books. Now, every time you do that, it gets your name seen around the site. So it, it puts you in front of people who may not have been looking for your books in your genre or people who may not have heard of you, who may not have known to search for you. And it puts you in front of them and gives them a chance to click on your name and see and see what books you have written. And don't forget the other booksellers. Basically, write reviews anywhere they will let you. If you do too many on Amazon, it could flag you up as a, as a sort of review spammer. So don't concentrate too closely on Amazon. But do have a look at other sites that will let you write reviews. We know how powerful they are. We know that reviews sell books and they can also really hurt book sales if they're not good reviews. Authors are very grateful for good reviews because they know that most book buyers do read reviews before they decide whether or not to buy a book. We know that re reviews from anybody are really powerful. Reviews from well-known authors can really, really help your own sales. So it's a good idea to review other authors in your that are around your level of success in terms of book sales. So around your level, slightly above and slightly below. So we're going to look at the power of reciprocity. It's important to review other books within your own genre because you're actually wanting to put your own name in front of the people who are looking at that author's books. So if they like that author's books, they might like yours. So it's a good idea to put yourself in front of them. It's also a good idea to focus most of your attention on going for the less well-known authors. They are more likely to read their own reviews and want to reciprocate. It is a good idea to review the very well-known authors as well, but not for reciprocity. It's just to get ourselves in front of their audience. I had in my early, early days of my publishing career, I got a fantastic review from Rhonda Del Boccio, who is the story lady, and she's quite well known in, in book marketing. She's a great person to follow. She's very good videos on YouTube and, and blog posts and things. But I didn't realise just how powerful she was until I saw my sales of that book shoot up. So people who followed her obviously trusted her opinion and bought my book. Now. What that did, it's not a, it's not a personal contact. We, we've said hello on social media. Well, it was a completely unsolicited review. But what it did was made me extremely grateful. And now I promote her books absolutely everywhere. If, if it's relevant, obviously. So I will, whenever she has a new book out, I will read and review it. I will comment on her videos on YouTube. When we do something for somebody, it changes things. It makes them want to help us. And that's why going for the less well-known names, I'm not suggesting that Rhonda isn't well-known, but if we were going after Stephen King, he is extremely unlikely to do a review of our book in return. But when we go for the authors that aren't the huge celebrity names, then they are much more in tune with the need for marketing their own books, with the need for making connections and for reciprocity. Now, a good idea in your reviews is to use your book title. You can use perhaps your most relevant, if you're reviewing something in a, in a particular genre, or your best-selling book, because you might be known for that. And you can use that in various ways. You can add it to your signature in your review. 
Now, Amazon doesn't actually give you a facility for adding a signature, but when you write your review, you can just write your name at the bottom and say author of. You can also mention the name of your book in the review itself, but do it subtly. We're, we're, not, we're not trying to spam people here. We're trying to say, I can do a review of this book because I write in a similar genre and I'm and I'm sort of an expert in this field and that's why I'm reviewing this this book because I know about this and I think this is a great book so be careful not to be seen to be self publicizing and you can use it in your actual name on for example Amazon now when you're on Amazon if you do do reviews you will have a public profile that has your name and they call it your pen name you can change that if you want to include your best-selling book title or whichever but just bear in mind that that's going to follow you all across Amazon so if you write in a number of genres that's perhaps not as relevant for you now as authors we all know how how grateful we are for reviews and we always say to people just just do a review you don't have to write an essay you don't have to make it fantastic literature just do a review and it's the same for us we don't have to stress over it we just need to write a couple of sentences I've said short but sweet but not overly sweet and I think you know what I mean I think we've all seen examples of reviews on Amazon that are a tit for tat I'll review your book if you review mine and it's people saying how wonderful an 8,000 word Kindle book is. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't read well. It, it, it looks false. Often this sort of thing is taken down by Amazon because they realise there's a tit for tat thing going on. So they suspect books that get lots and lots of five star reviews from other authors. So a four star review isn't necessarily a bad thing. And if you can point out why you're giving it four stars, that's even better. So if you say, so you could say, I've given this my top star rating. I never give five stars, but I've given this four star because it's fantastic. Or go ahead and give a five star review, but say why you need, you need to qualify it, but say that the author covered all the bases, gave examples, did lots of other things. Or if it's a novel, say that it just really captured you. It was a, a complete page turner. And if it's a thriller, you didn't guess who it was. So do qualify why you're giving a five star, otherwise it does look false. It's a great idea to use something from the book in, in your review. So if you can quote a couple of lines or, or an actual quote from the book, it does make it seem more real and it seems as if you really got it and, and this is why you're, you're quoting from it. And do watch your spelling and grammar. This is real writing, okay? It's not one of your books or an article or anything, but it's going to be seen by potentially a lot of people and you don't want to be associated with a thrown together thing that's poor in pronunciation and spelling and grammar and doesn't read well. So just check it over. In fact, I've started to write my reviews in Word and copy and paste them onto the different sites just to make sure. If you want to change your profile name on Amazon, you just go to Amazon.com or whatever the Amazon is in your country and your account and then scroll down to personalization and then over on the right, your public profile. And in there, you can change it. Normally says that these things change over time, but it normally says pen name. And if it changes, it will have something to do with name. And that's where you can add your book title if you want to, or just author or whatever you want. If you do write in multiple genres with with one name though it's not a good idea because that could confuse people you might decide that you don't want certain things to actually show on your profile and you can click edit activity settings within this same personalization area to change what is shown on your profile on Amazon also in the personalization area while we're on Amazon you can click your social settings to link your Facebook or Twitter accounts to Amazon. There are good reasons for doing so because it puts your review in front of all your connections on Facebook and if anybody likes it or comments on it, it puts it in front of their connections as well. So if the review appears on your Facebook stream, you could go further if you want to. If you are friends with the author, you could tag them so that it would appear on their page. They may then choose to share it and share it themselves if they want to. Or if you aren't friends with them, you could share it to the author's page and just add a personal note. It's all about making connections. On Twitter, I prefer not to have my account linked and I like to take a screenshot of the review because images are becoming increasingly popular on Twitter as they are in face on Facebook actually it's a good idea to use a lot of images on Facebook and then on Twitter you can upload that picture of the review and include an at mention with the author's name so follow the author and if you at 
their Twitter handle. It will appear on their stream and to their connections with the image of the review and they may then choose to retweet that. You could add the URL to review if you want to as well. And again, it's all about making connections. It's it's interesting what, what can happen that you would never guess. I did a review before I was a published author in my own name. I used to write for other people, but I wasn't in my own name. And I was running a training centre at the time. I wrote a review on a book that I actually bought several copies of to give to our students. And it was an excellent book. And I wrote this review and I wasn't thinking of promoting myself. But in it, I simply simply mentioned that I ran a training centre in such and such a city. I mean, it was a fairly big city. I didn't I didn't think anything would come with of that. But a lady in the Middle East who was coming to the UK knew she was going to be here a while. She read that review and she looked me up because of course everything's available on, on the internet, isn't it? So she looked at my name, she looked at the city, she looked at training and she eventually tracked me down gave me a call and said, I'd like to do some courses with you. What an opportunity that was. And that, in fact, was what originally gave me this feeling that, my goodness, reviews are even more important than we realise as authors. There are so many connections that can be made. So it's it's not just about promoting ourselves and our own books. It's about making valuable connections. It's about doing a favour for someone else, whether or not they return it. It makes us look good. To be doing so. Now, those reviews we can actually repurpose. This is the latest buzz thing on the internet now. It's about repurposing content. So you could turn that review into a blog post. So you could rewrite it, you could expand it a little, you could put it on your blog, then you could tweet and Facebook and Google Plus and everything else about that. You could choose to interview the author on your blog or whatever you run. You might have a podcast, you might do teleseminars, you might have a YouTube channel. So you could contact the author and say, could you answer these questions or could you send me your standard interview? They might have a, a media pack or they might actually agree to an interview. So you could do perhaps a Google Hangout and record that, have that going out on YouTube and Google+. Plus. It's all about getting yourself out there, getting in front of that other author's audience, them getting in front of your audience fantastic stuff. You could even turn a series of reviews on books in your genre into a tips book and you could use that as a giveaway on your website. Now lots of people wonder about what to use as a giveaway. The idea is that you have something on your site to say enter your email address to get this free content and that email address is what what we use for list building. We have a list of email addresses that we can then use to contact those people and it has to be done ethically we have to say in when they when they sign up we have to have said look we're not going to spam you but we may use your email to send you the occasional newsletter but you can unsubscribe at any time so that's the idea if you repurposed a series of reviews on books that are a little bit similar to yours in your own genre you could expand that into a tips book and have it as a giveaway so that people could give you their email address in return for getting that book. And that would be very quick and easy to write. You could even just have it as the reviews and say, this short book contains my personal recommendations of books that you might enjoy, that you might find of benefit to you, and you can download it for free. But it's So that is how to review other people's books in order to promote your own. And if we all did it, it would be great. Thanks for watching.